Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about when we recommend 10 to 20 work sets a week for a muscle group. This isn't intended as an absolute, it's intended to help people balance the stimulus to fatigue uh, who don't know how to coach. In other words, those of us who coach full time. We're not always counting sets per se the same way that everyone else is. You know, I get it. That's what studies are done on. That's what the layman looks at. But a lot of times what coaches are looking at for a muscle group and hypertrophying it, because we have to even for strength sports and, and other sports, uh, bigger muscles equals higher force production. It raises your strength ceiling. So we're all chasing hypertrophy. We're all chasing it. All chasing gains. Hey. Okay. Even my power lifters who you see up here in the background, we're chasing muscle growth most of the time. All right, so that being said, we're usually looking at stimulus to fatigue of not, oh, did we do 12 sets, although we might express it to people uh, we're talking to that way who uh, are not quite at the same level, but what we're looking at is total training stimulus, okay? And that's where it gets confusing because, you know, I'll prescribe stuff and then people out there are like, well, uh, you know, how, how much do you count that stimulus? You know, how, how many of those sets really count towards what? Well, that's what we're looking at as coaches. We're looking at the total training stimulus. You know, if I give you a certain number of different exercises, reps and reserve, uh, I'm going to have some exercises that may stimulate that muscle better than others. Uh, you know, like that, that comes up with, say, a chin-up or certain types of curls versus a row for biceps. It's, it's, rows still work in biceps. It's not as good. But we're still looking at total stimulus. Um, how fatiguing were the sets in terms of uh, upper threshold motor unit activation, right? What did we activate? What did we stimulate? And there's a little difference between a set that gets, you know, four reps from failure versus one that goes to failure. So what we are looking at is how much total training stimulus did you get relative to the total amount of fatigue and can you recover from it? And fatigue isn't just what people are thinking of in terms of, well, the, the localized muscle. That's one element of fatigue. And that's something that we look at in terms of fatigue, absolutely. But what about tendon fatigue? What about axial loading? Okay. When I'm writing a programming week or a, or a whole programming block for one of my athletes, one of my lifters, I am looking at the cumulative stress placed upon their body and assessing can they recover from it. And I'm also looking at things like can their bicep tendon, can their pec tendons, can their hamstring tendon, how much load can that tendon handle? keeping in mind certain exercises hit those tendons harder, both in terms of adaptative stress and recovery, you know, and total inflammation it might cause. We're looking at it from that perspective, or at least I am. How often am I going to need to pull that movement out to get that fatigue under control? In other words, there might be an exercise that is a phenomenal builder for that muscle, but it also creates, creates a great deal of stress on a joint or a tendon. And we can only run that exercise so long, or we can only do so many sets of it a week before we're gonna have to rotate it out to get that inflammation down, to get the overuse injuries down. And we may have to rotate it for a slightly inferior exercise from a stimulus perspective, but one that puts dramatically less stress on the tendon and the joint, okay? Because maybe it, it doesn't stress it quite as much at the point where there's the most mechanical tension there. That's what we're looking at. How much total axial loading am I subjecting a lifter to? That's part of the fatigue equation. Okay, and let's come back over to that point. When fatigue versus stimulus gets too high, you don't grow or you grow dramatically less. In other words, there's definitely been studies on that that found as volume goes up to a certain threshold, particularly in a given training session, what happens? Hypertrophy may go down, doesn't go to zero. People will say, well, is that overtraining? Well, it's not true overtraining. 
it's just exceeding your recovery capacity. Because if it takes you too long to recover, that also cuts into your growth window. Okay, muscles are only going to grow so long from a workout. And if it takes you too long to recover, that is going to compromise muscle growth. Not saying you won't gain anything, I'm just saying it's going to compromise it. So we look at things like the stimulus versus fatigue. Same thing when it comes to tendon, axial loading, everything else. How much am I beating that lifter up? Because the body can take a lot of abuse. And a lot of that abuse will make us bigger and stronger. Up to a point. Okay? And different exercises are going to place different amounts of fatigue and different types of fatigue on the body or parts of the body. So we're looking at all of that. I'm looking at those things as a coach. But when I put out information to the layman who's not going to understand that on a deep level, and because it's not their job to understand it. It is not their job. They do something else to make their money. I get people strong full time. I get people jacked full time. Seven days a week. It's my, my profession. It's my, by far my largest income stream. Hey, this channel is, makes pennies compared to my coaching. Believe me, I couldn't afford the lifestyle I have these days off of just my, my YouTube. What it makes, it's not possible. Coaching is, is my job. These individuals in the video, these are people I coach. Getting them strong is my job. For other people, it's not. So what do we do? We tell them, well, about 10 to 20 sets because that's going to be the safe spot if they're reasonably intelligent about it. Now, if we tell them 10 to 20 sets and all 10, or let's say they go to try to do 18 or 20 sets and all of them are very high fatigue movements, all of them are high axial loading movements and they're not working with a novice lifter anymore. Well, that's going to be a problem. It's not going to work, particularly if their lifter isn't using any substances to enhance recovery or they don't have a perfect lifestyle. Hey, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem here. They need to be closer to the 10. All right, if people are using mostly exercises that are very easy to recover from, all right, they maybe can get away with closer to that 20 side of the scale. Barring overuse, overuse is still going to potentially happen. Same thing with the 10 to 20 on your lifestyle. All right. Are you in a calorie surplus? Are you in a calorie deficit? Are you in maintenance? That's going to affect where that optimal is on that 10 to 20. It's going to impact it. How much sleep do you get at night? Well, that's going to impact where you are on that scale. But Outside of that, as long as they're making reasonably intelligent choices in their exercise selection, the 10 to 20 is probably going to be really good. So that's why we we're recommending it. It's not a hard rule. It's a guideline for people who don't understand the stimulus to fatigue on a deep level. It's for the layman. And it's to give you guys a good idea of kind of where you probably need to be. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.